Namaste and welcome back to the DSA classes. Today, my dear friends, we are going to be discussing a very important problem from the interview point of view called as the maximum sum subarray of size k. Now, what does this problem mean? I will explain. But I have selected this problem for a very important purpose, which is through this problem, you will be introduced to a very important algorithm called as the sliding window technique. Now the sliding window technique can help you solve a wide variety of problems in a very efficient way and hence it's very important for you to know. Anyways, what does this problem expect us to do? Okay, watch it. Assume this is an array given to me. They will also give me a k value called as 3. Now what should be the output of your program? Now very simple. You know an array has smaller arrays called as subarrays, right? Now what you must do is you must find such a subarray of size 3 whose sum of the elements is greater than all other subarrays or it has the maximum sum. How pretty will pick. Now for example, size is 3 which means this is a subarray of size 3. If I add 2 plus 9 plus 31, I will get 42 which is what I am showing you there. Similarly, if in case I next take a subarray of size 3, 9 plus 31 minus 4 is 36 that is what I am showing you. Similarly, 31 plus minus 4 plus 21 is 48. Similarly, minus 4 plus 21 plus 7 is 24. Now, this is the sum of all subarrays in array of size 3, which is the maximum 48. And 48 was given to us by this subarray, 31 minus 4 plus 21, which means 48 should be our output. Any confusion to that? If you still didn't understand, let's take another example. This is an array. Now, in this array also, k is 3, which means you have to find subarrays of size 3. And hence, if you look here, you will find that I have 6 plus minus 9 plus 7. 6 plus minus 9 plus 7, if I add, how much is it? 4. Similarly, so that is 1. Next one is minus 9 plus 7 plus 91, which is 89. That is another one. Then 7 plus 91 plus 4 is 102. So, please look at this and tell me which is the maximum guys that you can see is 102. Hence, output should be 102 which is given by this subarray of size 3. Any confusion till this point of time? Great. Yes sir, we understood till here. Now, how can we solve it? Well, forget about the sliding window technique and all. How will you solve this? What is the naive way of solving this? What is a simple approach? Simple approach is very easy. I am showing you the naive approach. Okay. This is my array. This is uh, k is 3. So what I am going to do is very simple. I will have two variables. Current sum, maximum sum. C sum, M sum. Current sum, initially value will be 0. Maximum sum, I will give it a very big negative value, which for the time being, let's call it as minus infinity. Okay. For the time being, let's call it as minus infinity. Okay, how to initialize it with a very large negative value, I will show you. Anyways, the point is that why are we giving a very large negative value? So that we find any value larger than that, we can replace it. So whenever you want a variable to finally hold the maximum of something you're trying to find, always initialize it with a negative value, a very large negative value, something very small. That is how you can replace maximum, maximum, maximum. Similarly, you're trying to find something which is minimum. Always initialize it with a very large value. So that when you find a smaller value, you can keep replacing, replacing and go. Come. Okay. It's very simple. Great. Next what, sir, you will ask. Now what I will do is, I am going to run a loop where I will tell, hey, I, you must start from zero. Okay. That is the beginning. Now what I will do is, I am going to also appoint J and I will tell J, you start from wherever I is starting. Now very simple. What I will do is, I will make j go till the next three elements. Why? Because k is 3. I should find a subarray of size 3. So what I will do is, right now uh, j, uh, j th value is 2. I will add that to current sum. Current sum will become 2. Next I will move forward. Next what I will do is, 9 is there. 9 I will add it to the existing current sum, which means, uh, uh, you know, current sum updates like that. Then j moves forward. Again, I will take the current uh, value of j, update it to the current sum, which means current sum at the end of this traversal or iteration is 42. Any confusion till yet? Great. After which, I will check is the current sum that I found 
is it larger than my maximum sum? I'll find the max between both. Obviously, 42 is far greater than minus infinity and hence I will replace my uh, maximum sum with 42. So, I'm assuming my maximum sum is 42. I may be right, I may be wrong. So, what will you do next, sir? What I will do next is I will move i forward. Again, j starts from wherever i is starting. Now, j's duty is to find this subarray sum. So, similarly, 9 plus 31 plus minus 4, like that this traverse if I do, current sum is going to have 36. Then I will see is 36 greater than the previous value of m sum which is 42. No, no means I will not update maximum sum. Again, i moves forward. After i moves forward, j starts from wherever i is and you know you have to find this subarray sum. If I find this subarray sum successfully, then current sum is going to be 48. Then I will check is it greater than the previous value of m sum? Yes, 42. Which 48 is greater than 42 means update m sum as 48. So right now the maximum sum is 48. Then what happens is i is going to move forward. After i moves forward, next what is going to happen is j is going to start from wherever i is and I will find this uh, subarray sum. If I find this subarray sum, minus 4 plus 21 plus 7 is nothing but 24. That will be my current sum and I will check is it greater than the previous maximum sum. No, no means I will not update. Now, i must not move forward because if i moves forward, I will not find another subarray of size 3. I should not move forward. So, what should I do? So, what I should do is I should stop at the third last element. I will be able to pick. So, how are we going to run the loop? Very simple. Watch it. First, I will create a variable n sum, initialize it with a negative value. I will create a variable called a c sum, initialize it with 0. Then I will run a loop where I will tell, hey, i start from 0 and you must go to the third last element or in other words, you can see if k was 2 to the second last element, if k is 3, third last element, if k is 4, fourth last element, so on and so forth. So, how will you write the condition? Very simple. Watch it. Like this, here, the size of my array is 6. I should go till 3. If my size of the array was 8, I should go till 5. Why? Because that is a k value. In other words, how will you get this 3, this 5, etc.? Very simple. What I will do is, I, I have the size of my array. So, I will tell length of a. So, like now, what is the length of this? 6. Now, 6 should become 3. I have k with me. So, what I will do? Minus k. That's it. It will work for everything. For example, length is 8. k is 3. 8 minus 3 is 5. So, that is how you can tell the boundary. So, I will tell i start from 0 and go to length of a minus k. Now, inside that, for every value of i, there is a j. j starts from i. Goes till where? Till the length of the subarray that k is asking you to find. Here k was 3 means wherever j started, it should go till 3 elements. So, till k elements. So, I will tell from i to k. Inside that, it should find the current sum. So, current sum is equal to old value of current sum plus a of j. This everyone knows. After coming out, check whether the current sum you found is greater than the previous maximum sum. So, update maximum sum with whatever is the maximum between the current sum you calculated and the maximum sum. And ultimately, come out of both loops and return maximum sum. And this is a very simple way of finding it, a naive approach. Obviously, if you analyze the time complexity, you will know that it is a big O of n square solution. It's a big O of n square solution because there is a loop within a loop. So, the question is, can this n square time complexity be reduced and made more efficient such that maybe in linear time, in big O of n complexity, can I solve it? 100% you And my dear friends, that is where your sliding window technique comes into the picture. Now, how is this sliding window technique going to help us? Let me show you. Alright, now let me show you how you can be solving the previous problem in a linear time complexity of big O of n time complexity, right? Now, for this, you must understand a very famous array technique called as the sliding window technique. Now, you may be wondering, what does it mean? What do you mean by sliding window? First of all, what does a sliding window mean? Okay, let me give you an example. Assume I take you to this beautiful mountainous region, right? Now, you can see the entire scenery. But let us assume there was a wall. Now, you can't see anything. Now, on that wall, I'll bring a window. Now, if you notice, only what the window shows you, that much scenery you're able to see. Now, that's not a normal window. It's a sliding window. So, if I slide it, 
you can see the next part of the scenery. If I slide it even more, you can see the next part of the scenery. So, such a window is only called as a sliding window. Now, what does this have to do with our array, you must be wondering. Let me show you. My dear friends, assume this is the array that we are taking into consideration. Now, if you look at this array carefully, you will notice one thing, which is 2, 9, 31, minus 4, 21, 7 I have, and we have to find the maximum sum somewhere. Now, I am going to use a technique called as a sliding window approach. And here, the size of the subarray must be 3. So, k is 3. So, as usual, I will create two variables. One called as w sum. w meaning window sum. What do you mean by that, sir? I will tell you. One more called as m sum. This window sum, I will initialize it as 0. This maximum sum, I will make it as minus infinity and both the initializations, I am just showing it here. Any confusion till here? Great. What else, sir, you may ask? What else if you ask me? Name only tell sliding window. So, I need a sliding window. Now, I am going to create a sliding window, but the size of this window is always going to be equal to k. So, what is the value of k? 3, which means size of this window is going to be 3. Any confusion till here? So, this is my sliding window. Now, how will this sliding window help us find the maximum sum subarray in just one iteration or using just one loop or in other words in linear time if you ask me, watch it. I am trying to explain. First and foremost, what I will do is, I am going to place this sliding window at the beginning of my array. If I place this sliding window at the beginning of my array, then one thing you can clearly notice is that I am going to get the sum, I am going to get the sum of the first subarray, which is the size of this sliding window, which is nothing but 3. How playable to think. So, the first step in the sliding window algorithm is to calculate this initial window sum, the first subarray's window sum. How playable to think. And window sum means this is my window. What can I see through the window? I can't see the entire array. I can see only 3 elements. This 3 element sum I want to find. So, if in case we have to programmatically do it, how will you do it? You will just uh, create, uh, start a loop i which starts from uh, 0 because we are finding the first subarray, right? So, it will always start from 0. And it should go till where? It should go till k, in other words, uh, you know, uh, the k is 3. So, 3 minus 1 till the second index it has to go, right? That's what I am also telling. For i equal to 0 to k, but anyways, it will stop one step before. Inside that, I want to find this first window sum. How will you do that? I will tell you window sum is equal to old value of window sum plus a of i. Okay, able to think. If you do this, what will happen? You guys know. First, 2 is the value. You will add it to w sum. w sum becomes 2. After which, i moves forward. Next, 9 is there. You will add uh, 9 to the existing value, which means 9 plus 2, 11 you will get. After which you are going to i moves forward, next value 31 you will take added in which case totally you have got 42 as the sum. So, initial window sum is 42. Any confusion to that? Great. After that what? After that what if you ask me? Now my duty is to use this window and move forward to see if in case there is any subarray whose sum is going to be greater than this window sum that I have calculated and that will ultimately be my maximum sum. So, how are we going to do this you must be thinking. Now, watch this and understand it carefully. First and foremost, now I am going to move this window forward. Hmm. Now, if I move this window forward, from where should I start and till where should I go? is the question. From where should I start and where should I go is the question. Now, very simple. Watch this guys. What I will do is, let me try to first tell you the intuition, how to think of this algorithm. Now, if I move this window forward, now if you notice, this element is no longer visible to me. Whereas, this element is now visible to me. How are able to think? This means, if I have to find the sum of this subarray, one way you can do it is take the previous sum which was still here, from that remove this sum because this is not visible anymore. So, what is invisible remove it, what is visible add it, would you agree with me? Which means what was your w sum 42, from 42 you first subtract 2, what will you get 40. Then to that you add this minus 4. So, 40 minus 4 is 36. 
that becomes your new w sum up you're able to think so i hope you're able to see how to find similarly i will move the window forward if i move the window forward now this next sub array sum i want very simple the moment you move the window forward one element is not visible one new element is visible so if you want to find the sum what should you do very simple whatever is your w sum from that first remove 9 and add 21 don't you think you will get the new w sum or you able to think now if i remove 9 this is what it will become if i add 21 this is what it will become you got the sum of this do you see in one iteration you are getting the sum of every sum array similarly i will move this window forward if i move this window forward then again one element i can't see one more element i can see so if i have to find the sum of this sum array all you have to do is from the previous w sum which included this remove this and in the new w sum add the element which is now visible so remove 31 that is what w sum becomes add 7 that is the the sum of this sum array how prepared let's see so in one iteration you will be able to find the sum of every sum array and you will be able to update it in w sum now all you have to do is every time you calculate w sum compare it with the maximum sum and keep updating the maximum sum ultimately you will get your answer i hope everybody is able to think now how can we write this as code you must be wondering now i am want you to focus initially the window was here initially the window was here you found the initial w sum you found it which i am re updating making it as 42 you found 42 which is what this first loop did now if i move this if i move my window one thing you can notice is that ultimately all i need to know is this element and this uh, this element the one which appeared the one which disappeared if i know these two elements i will be able to find my new w sum i repeat the window was here you already calculated the w sum now i am moving the window forward if i move the window forward to calculate the sum of this sum array what do i need what i need is what disappeared what appeared these two things only i need so watch it what if i told you that let's create one loop where if you move this window if you move this window the first element which newly appeared what is the index it is present at 3 it's present at 3 and this 3 is nothing but k is nothing but k which means what if i tell hey i you please start from k you still please start from k now i already know this previous sum array sum it is there in w sum from it from there i will first have to remove this and add this would you agree with me which means i is here now i want this index i want this index how will you get this index you have you know where i is you know what is k try to see using i and k can you get the index of the element which disappeared 100% you can how i minus k 3 minus 3 is 0 how you are able to think so you got the index of the element which disappeared so can you not access it and subtract it how are you able to think subtract this add this which means i am writing my new w sum is going to be the old w sum minus the element which disappeared which is nothing but a of i minus k which is zero how are you able to think now you removed this from the sum you need to add what appeared into the sum and what appeared is wherever i is i will be able to think so plus a of i did you understand how to calculate the new w sum and if i do this from 42 if i subtract 2 and i add minus 4 that is my new w sum you found your new w sum now all you have to do is now check whether whatever is there in m sum whether it is lesser or greater than w sum because if it is lesser this should become the maximum sum so maximum sum is equal to max between w sum and m sum
any confusion till here now for i started from k now till where should it go you must be thinking so watch it all of you now i'll tell i move forward so i moves forward when i moves forward what it actually means is that my window is moving forward that is what it means now be able to think if i moves forward it means my window is moving forward the moment my window moved forward one element disappeared one element appeared now you have to find w sum how will you find that simple old value of w sum minus the element which disappeared which is a of i 4 4 minus k value is 3 which is 1 plus the element which appeared which is at i did you get the intuition of how this algorithm works similarly so that way if i uh, from the old value of w sum if i subtract 9 and add 21 this is my new w sum any confusion till here now what you have to do is check is it greater than the previous m sum that is what i'm checking max yes it is greater update m sum m sum becomes updated because it is greater any confusion till here after which again i'm telling i please move forward i goes to the end if i moves forward it means window is moving forward if window moves forward one element disappeared one element appeared how to find the new w sum very simple the uh, sum of the elements present in the window is equal to old window sum minus a of i minus k i is 4 4 min i mean sorry i is 5 5 minus 3 is 2 and at 2 i have whatever is disappeared so subtract that add this and if i add it this is my new w sum check whether it is greater than the m sum no it is not greater which means m sum remains the same and finally when i moves forward it goes outside the loop which means iteration is over at the end of it you have the maximum sum subarray of size k come outside return it return m sum only one loop right it is moving till the end which means approximately you can say big o of n only is a time complexity n square became n so don't you think this is a very efficient way of doing it so whenever you have to find maximum sum subarray of a given set size or length or minimum length subarray of a given size here you are finding max you can find minimum also instead of finding max you have to check min that's all it is this is a very very good technique which we will be using multiple times in the future I hope everybody understood the approach. Now let's go code and check whether it works. Okay, let's write some code. So basically, I have my array ready with me. Now I will just go and I'm going to create one function, which I'll call it as static int because we are returning the maximum sum which is an integer, and uh, I will also call this as you know maybe uh, max sum subway. okay and i'll obviously pass this integer array next i will go inside that and uh, first and foremost i will be creating one integer variable called as w sum which i will initialize it to be 0 next i will create one more integer variable i will call it as uh, c sum or the current sum which i will also initialize it uh, to uh, sorry uh, m sum not uh, c sum m sum maximum sum i want to store i will initialize it to a very uh, you know uh, low integer value so maybe some minus uh, you know 999999 some 69 you can or you can do you can do like this or if you want the most minimum value which can be stored in an integer you need the, that minus 2147 if you want that very simple you just have to tell integer class is there inside that there is a constant call as min min value okay so this will give you that next what i will do is i will come uh, down and i'm going to now first find the first window size how people will think here i'll just go and i'll tell int k equal to 3 so that you know that the k value is 3 okay fine now i will go here and what i will do is i want to find the first k element sum that is my first window sum so i will just go there and i will tell for Uh, int i starting from zero, that is the beginning of the array, and it should find the first three elements. So I'll tell i less than k. I less than k means till two it will go. I will be able to think. Next i plus plus, and inside that I will come and I will tell w sum plus equal to uh, plus equal to a of i. 
which is nothing but w sum is equal to old value of w sum plus e of i. So, you have got a first sliding window sum. Next, I will come down and I want to find the maximum. So, how will you do that? I will tell for. Now, you know, i should start from k. So, I will tell i equal to k. And uh, next, I will tell uh, i uh, should go to the end. So, less than a dot length i plus plus and inside that I will just come and I will tell w sum is equal to old value of w sum minus the element which disappeared from the window which is minus a of i minus k plus the element which appeared in the window which is a of i and inside that just go and uh, that is w sum you got. Now you have to see whether the w sum you calculated is greater than the m sum. So very simple, I will tell uh, math dot max and I will find the max between m sum and uh, w sum and whichever is max that will become my m sum, that will become my m sum. Okay, good. Now I will come outside the for loop and return the m sum. Now you know. 31 minus 4 plus 21. This is the sum that we should be getting because this is the maximum sum subarray of length k in our case 3. Anyways, I'll come down and I will just uh, tell system dot out dot print ln and I will call my function. So max sum subarray and uh, I will pass a right now. I'll just execute. Upon executing, uh, one can clearly notice that you got the output as uh, okay a exception well, go to this end unresolved compilation so somewhere there is a compilation problem k cannot be resolved oh correct so if you go on top first and foremost we have told k what is this k it doesn't know because while finding maximum sum subarray not only should you pass the array you should also find the k value so i'll just tell int k i'll pass int k and then i will come down and here i will also pass k while calling it k value is important Okay. Now, if in case I execute, one can notice 48 you have got. So, 31 minus 4 plus 21 is nothing but 48. So, I hope you really enjoyed this program and you have mastered the approach behind this sliding window technique, a very useful technique. We will be using it in many problems in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for attending. Let's catch up in the next class. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.